Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was a very clever introduction. Split a rail, split an atom, split a check. <laughs> but you know, Don, you made history yourself. What do you mean, Jack? You're the only man who ever split a girdle. <laughs> and live with me, will you? <laughs> well, now, hold on, Jack. I don't even wear a girdle. Well, you should, Don. When you had that suit made, three tailors worked on it at the same time, and they never even saw each other. <laughs> And live with me, will you, brother? <laughs> Say, you're pretty sharp today, Jack. Well, you gotta be sharp when you're playing here for the boys at Birmingham Hospital. What a picturesque place, the beautiful San Fernando Valley, surrounded by high mountains with peaks that meet the sky, the floor of the valley with its boulevards that meet Van Nuys, the gates of Birmingham with its bus that meets nobody. <laughs> The fertile soil... Wait a minute, Jack. I thought the bus service out here was excellent. Excellent. Don, a soldier in Hollywood had a seven-year itch. They sent him to Birmingham by bus, and it took so long that the itch got off at Sherman Oaks. <laughs> by, by the time he... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Hey, these boys really gave you a terrific reception, Mary. Well, maybe that's because they know me here, Jack. You see, I'm a member of the VACS, the Volunteer Army Canteen Service. Oh, the VAX. Uh... Yes, a lot of my friends belong to it. We come out to the hospital two or three times a week and go through the wards with cigarettes, candy, apples, oranges, bananas, and the boys really go for them. Gee, why didn't I think of... Jack, we don't <laughs> charge them. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't mean that. You know, Mary, I came out last week and went through the wards playing my violin. Well, Jack, I think that was very nice of you to play your violin for the boys. Thanks. Mary, did you say you gave the boys apples, oranges, and bananas? Uh-huh. Where do those tomatoes come from? <laughs> I was so embarrassed there. What's that? <laughs> That's some of the boys bowling. You know, Jack, the patients here made all the equipment themselves. All the equipment? Mary, the, the alley, I can believe, but how could they make a big bowling ball? Uh, they took one of the doctor's pills and put three holes in it. <laughs> oh. And did they, did they make the, pin, the pins themselves? No, they don't have any pins. Well, what are they knocking down? The doctors. <laughs> Mary, if you expect me to believe okay, that... Okay, fellas, here I am, the one and only Birmingham. Uh, well, pour it right on. That's it, the slaves are stuck. Yeah, just make me know it. Now, that's what I call appreciation for the sensation of the nation. Phil, Phil, coming in here with a noisy entrance doesn't excuse you for being late. Where were you? Well, I'm sorry, Jackson, but I overslept. You see, me and my boys had a chance to play a ritzy place last night, and, well, we just couldn't afford to pass it up. Oh, that's different, Phil. Where'd you play? At the Brass Rail. <laughs> the Brass Rail. Phil, your band has 18 men. I mean, how could a place like that afford to pay you? Well, they gave us a pretty good deal, 15 bucks and all we could drink. <laughs> oh, well, that wasn't so bad. Well, the guy wants us to come back next week, but the deal isn't quite as good. All right, what does he want to pay you? $18,000 and no drinks. <laughs> Well, the guy's got to protect himself. <laughs> anyway, Phil, you ought to be ashamed of yourself only making those kind of deals. What do you mean? Last week we were offered $200 and all we could drink, and we turned it down. Now, where do they want you to play? At Ador. <laughs> Ador? Phil, that's a dairy. Hey, Jackson. I mean, why in the world? Hey, hey Jackson, wait a minute. Ain't you going to ask me what kind of music we play at a dairy? No. Well, then I'll tell you anyway. A cow, a cow, a boogie. <laughs> You gotta stop eating that alfalfa, kid. <laughs> Phil, you... Oh, brother. Phil, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, uh, Jack, you mind if I say something? Don, everybody knows that lucky strike means fine tobacco. Oh, I don't mean that, Jack, but talking about dairies reminded me that they've developed a process whereby they make clothing out of milk. Well, what will them cows think of next? <laughs> Quiet, Phil. Say, Mary, didn't Mary, didn't you tell me you had a dress made out of milk? Yes, Jack. It's called Aralac. 
Well, why didn't you wear it today? I couldn't. I wore it last night to the Palladium. A soldier asked me to jitterbug, and you'll never guess what happened. What? He whirled me around the floor once, and my dress turned to butter. <laughs> butter? Oh, my goodness. Well, what, what did the soldier do? Nothing. He gave me eight points and took me home. <laughs> time I start to worry about Hello, Mr. You. Benny. Oh, hello, Larry. How are you? <laughs> say, uh, say, Larry, what's that you've got in your hand there? Oh, it's a fan letter. I just received it this morning. Well, you're going places. Come on, kid. Don't be modest. Uh, read your fan letter to us. Okay. Dear Mr. Stevens, please send check for the fan you bought last summer. <laughs> Larry, just sing your song. If he comes in here next week with a washing machine letter, I'll hit him right on the head with it. Imagine you. I was all by that dream sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, kid. And now, fellas... Say, uh, Jack, I want to ask you something. Uh, what is it, Don? Did the police ever catch the gangster who robbed you of the $10,000? No, no, not yet, Don. But I think they'll try a little harder now. You know, I offered a reward for his capture. Some reward. A dollar and a half and two courses of love and bloom. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no, really, I... No, I, I offered him more than that. I know, but who wants a lock of your hair? <laughs> Anything that's scarce nowadays is valuable. <laughs> and live with me, will you? That's a deal. Jack, uh, didn't I read where the gangster came back last week and beat you up? <laughs> the gangster beat me up? Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't even hurt me. Oh, uh, no. What about that military punch he gave you? Military punch? Yeah, he hit you on the chin and your brain took a three-day pass. <laughs> It was only three hours. What a lousy time I had. Hey, Jackson. What? Look, Jackson, when you get into a fight like that, you gotta be tricky. What? Well, when I'm in a fight, I tell the guy his shoelace is untied, and then when he looks down, boom, I clip him. I tried that, Phil. Well, I said to the gangster, look, your shoelace is untied. Well, what happened? He said, well, you're down there, tie it. <laughs> He went boom yet. <laughs> How do you like that? Jack, did you tie his shoelace? I would not. <laughs> anyway, I got up, drew back, and I... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, oh, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Where, where are you, Rochester? I'm home, and I called to tell you that the gangster who robbed you was just here. Oh, my goodness, he's after me again. Tell me everything that happened. Well, I heard the door buzzer, opened the door, and there stood the hold of man. So I invited him in. Invited him in? For heaven's sake, why did you do that? Boss, there's something about a man with a gun in his hand that brings out my sudden hospitality. <laughs> Oh, oh, he had a gun. With 12 notches. <laughs> 12 notches? Rochester, why didn't you grab it and capture him? I'm superstitious. I didn't want to be that 13th notch. <laughs> Rochester, where was your courage? It must have been somewhere around the house. It wasn't with me. <laughs> you know, Rochester, I hate to think of you being a coward. Yeah, depressing, ain't it? <laughs> Certainly is. But, you know, boss, there's a difference between being a coward and being practical. There is, huh? Yeah, if you're a coward and a man pulls a gun on you, you'll get down on your knees and beg for your life. Uh-huh. But if you're practical, you'll get down on your knees and try to think of something he's interested in. <laughs> That's what I thought. Anyway, you should have made you should have made some attempt to capture him. You know, boss, I hate to bring this up, but last week you had a mighty good opportunity to capture that gangster yourself. Rochester, he took me by surprise. Well, I didn't have no appointment with him. <laughs> well, there's no use to...
talking about it anymore. I'll see you when I get home. Okay. By the way, has Joe Lewis gotten there yet? Joe Lewis? You mean he's coming out here to Birmingham Hospital? Uh-huh. Last week you convinced him that he was a comedian, so he's coming out there and make the boys laugh. But Rochester, Joe Lewis is not a comedian. I think he'll be all right, boss. I gave him a good joke. You did? Yeah, you know the one you told me yesterday about the traveling salesman. Rochester, don't you know you can't tell a joke like that on the radio? I know it, but Joe doesn't. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, we'll, well, we'll do the best we can. I know the boys here would like to see Joe Lewis anyway. Goodbye, Rochester. Good. Everything backfires. I tried to get Joe Lewis as a bodyguard. Now he wants to be a comedian. All right, Phil, it's time for a band number. Let's have it. Okay, boys, come on, hit it. Well, I root two, 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 Phil, Phil, wait a minute. <laughs> what is that? I root two, 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 two. Bill, I want to ask you one question. How did you ever get into the music business? What are you talking about? Before I went with you, I spent three years with Phil Spitalny. Phil Spitalny? How could you play with Spitalny? He only has girls in his orchestra. My curls weren't always this short, Bob. <laughs> well, take the ribbon out of your hair and play a number, will okay, you? Okay, fellas, all right. One, two... Hold it, Phil, hold it. Come in. Hello, Joe. Hey, fellas, it's Joe Lewis. Chester told me you were coming up here to be a comedian, make the boys laugh. Do you think you can do it? Oh, sure. You know I used to be in the Army? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I know. I was a sergeant. A sergeant in the Army? Yeah, a sergeant is a rank between a private and a general. <laughs> oh, well, what about majors and colonels? They're mixed up in that someplace. <laughs> That's pretty funny, but look, Joe, your profession is fighting. Now, why don't you leave the comedy to me? After all, it took me 25 years to become a comedian. It's the same as fighting. Now, how long did it take you to become a champion? About uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I see. That's, uh, look, at, that's when you won the championship from Jim Braddock. But, Joe, here's what I want to find out. You really only lost one fight, and that was the first time you fought Max Schmelling. How did he ever get you in a position to knock you out? He told me my shoelace one time. <laughs> and, uh... And, and you fell for that? I fell for something. <laughs> yeah. But, Joe... Joe, you really gave it to Schmeling on that second fight when you knocked him out in the first round. How did you do it? I wore shoes with zipper on them. <laughs> <laughs> you really tricked them, didn't you? Say, Joe, I've always been a great fan of yours. Double up your fist and let me take a look at it once, will you? Okay. Ah, uh, just look at that fist, Jack. Doesn't that remind you of a Lucky Strike cigarette? <laughs> what? So round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> You're right, Don, and it leaves them so free and easy on the floor. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyone know something, Jack? When a fighter gets knocked down, the referee should stand over him and say, L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T. Don, what good is that? If the guy doesn't get up and ask for a lucky strike cigarette... He really, he really is. Oh. <laughs> Joe, it was certainly nice of you to drop in, and I'll see you right after the broadcast. Just a minute. I come in to be a comedian. I want to tell a joke. Uh, a joke? <laughs> well, well, all right. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me, Mr. Bennett, who was that lady I saw you with last night? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, not that old one. I'm not going to go along with that. Try it on somebody else. Okay. Oh, Miss Livingston. Yes, Joe. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? There was no lady. That was Jack Benny. He's all long walk that way. That's swell. Thanks. I do not. Look, Joe. Joe, I'll give you... 
No, I'll give you a proposition. I'll teach you how to be a comedian if you'll give me some pointers on self-defense. Sure, I'll show you right now. Now, wait a minute. I'll get Phil Harris to box with me. Oh, Phil? Okay, Jackson, I'll help you out. Now, what, what do I do, Joe? When Phil has come in with you with a jam, yeah. you swing at him with your right hand. Am I right, eh? Hey, Joe, watch me fool him. I'll swing with my left. Ready, Phil? Ready. Here I come. Ooh, my chin. Ad lib with me, will you, bud? <laughs> We're only playing. Hey, Jackson, look, I hit you so hard I untied your shoelace. My shoelace? Where? Ow! <laughs> you see, Jackson, it works every time. <laughs> Joe, did you see him pull that trick on me? Yeah, but how did you fall for that? You wear him button shoes. <laughs>
nice little fella there. Look, I'll attend to the other babies I have outside. Then I'll pick this one up and take him to his mother. But nurse! No. Hmm. Uh, get you get the Gosh, Phil, doesn't Jack look cute that way? Yeah, but I still like Alice better. <laughs> oh, look, the baby's falling asleep. <laughs> Baby, turn over on your side. I wish the nurse would take him and get him. Well, out. well, here I am again. Look, doctor. Now, now, you have nothing to worry about. I just got your test back from the laboratory, and it shows... <laughs> <laughs> well, I diagnosed your case all wrong. <laughs> Doctor, when you told me your age, I never thought of this. <laughs> Doctor, this is not my baby. This is not my baby. There's only one way to decide. Baby, tell me, is this your mother? Oh, oh that silly looking jerk. <laughs> boys who couldn't be here in the auditorium could hear our show over their bedside network. I also want to thank Joe Lewis for being with us on these past two programs. By the way, Joe, I think I've got the idea of self-defense now. You have? Yeah. Watch, I'll show you. Oh, Larry. Larry Stevens. Yes, Mr. Benny? Come here a minute. Now, put up your fist. Like this? Yes. Hey, Larry. Larry, your shoelace is untied. Where? Right there. Well, that's all right. I have to take them off tonight anyway. <laughs> What a lousy sport he is. Good night. <laughs>